Okay, welcome back to this playthrough of Bar Fontenoy. So, since last time uh, the French act had an activation and they they activated Don Danois' wing here with uh, Davre's regiment and Le Croissy's, uh, Croissy's regiment over here. So basically they they just moved up some troops that had routed before and they also they also were able to and they were also able to to fire with this unit on that one and they got uh, quite lucky so they were able to inflict one loss here and a, st and, uh, a morale check so, so these Austrian troops are now shaken and disordered and oh these are actually English and they have lost uh, quite a lot of uh, steps now. So they don't have much artillery left here. And this actually uh, led me to realize that uh, the, the allies, they really need an activation over here. So the, the allies now have the initiative, they have an activation. And I really think that uh, so what happened last last or actually earlier this turn was that uh, Leuvendal's uh, detachment, all the, all the cavalry from Leuvendal's detachment ran up here and charged into the Hanoverian uh, cavalry that had made sort of a, a right flank over here. And they they managed to kill or capture one of them and rout a lot of the others. So things are looking very dire here for the allied forces on the rightmost flank. So I think we really need to do something about that. So <clears throat> to try to rescue this situation. So I will activate uh, the vents uh, wing. And I've actually started to use these uh, activation indicators just to see like exactly what uh, units and uh, command leaders I activate when I activate an entire wing. Uh, to get a little bit better overview of what I'm going to move. So, I guess we will also place it on the actual units, but I think this is this is good enough. So, it's basically all of these forces. Now, these are French. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell them apart in this game, but um, yeah, the French uh, Lily there. Um, there's some French units over here that are some cavalry that's that have been doing pursuit and are now shaken and disordered. So I'm wondering if I should try to perhaps perhaps try to either counterattack here or somehow try to protect these routed units from these two. Um, that's one option. They do have even more cavalry. They have some cavalry up here. It's fresh down here. So we could also just try to block these. Maybe just form some kind of defensive line here in front of the uh, in front of the routed units. So I'll start by activating uh, this command here. Oh, first we have disorder, disorder recovery. I don't think I have any disorder recovery actually for this uh, in this wing. They're all routed, uh, so unfortunately you cannot uh, rally from routing until the end until the end of the turn. So we have to go through all the activations, and then by the end of the turn you might get lucky and, and, uh, and rally these units. They, they can also be French special results. Com like if the French would have gotten a combat activation here for example. Oh, which they actually did I think. Oh, well in any case they could have charged these units again. And that would not have been very... Ah oh, no, they're shaking this order and they can't do that.
So yeah, I think, I mean, this is the, the French line here with these units coming down here and there's basically nothing uh, on the right of that. So I think we, we have to use these still fresh cavalry units to try to make some kind of line that protects the, the right flank of the Hanoverian troops. And um, luckily, we're still not in minimum range of these cannons here, so if we were within three hexes of these cannons, they could do opportunity fire. Uh, but we're outside of the opportunity fire range. So yeah, I think I will start by moving this this command here. This is uh, this is Montigny's uh, regiment, and this guy will. Uh, I think I will just turn him around. So one, two. This is cavalry, of course, that could charge a flank. So, one, two. Still need to. <coughs> so, that's two to turn this way. I would actually feel more comfortable turning 180 degrees and then moving in here and maybe trying to attack from this side but the problem is that when you change facing 180 uh, you have to spend all your movement points so if we were to do something like that then he's already out of movement points so right now we've used two. Could potentially back up. So if I go here and then turn, they have zone control here, so it will cost extra. How many units are these? They are disordered, so they are halved actually. Oh wow, that's that's a chunk. And they have a leader there too. I guess we could put our leader there on the other hand. Yeah, I kind of wanted to move down these troops here, but uh, we might have just we might have to just. Um, attack these units instead. I guess if we I guess we do it like this. So ah, this is also twelve well ten strength points. It's quite a lot. They have lots of. So one, two, and this guy goes. Well, on the other hand, maybe I should try to attack this disordered stack here instead. I get the two to one. I'm trying to move these guys up here instead. <coughs> oh. This is infantry. This is infantry down here. I thought this was cavalry. I have some more cavalry down here, but that's not from the same wing. Yeah, the infantry won't get very far. So one of these units will have to try to pin this one at least. And the other two will have to take this one, I think. Okay. One, two, three, four for crossing the creek, and 
five for going into enemy zone. No, this is not sound of control here actually. Um, I assume they were. Yeah, they were oriented like that. So <clears throat> they were in line. I'm sh I'm pretty sure they were in line. So if you're facing a hex side, you're you're in march column. Um, I'm pretty sure they charged. So they were not. <clears throat> the question is whether they were actually in line like that, but I think I remember them being more oriented this way. So maybe not actually. I'll look it up later. Uh, for now, let's finish the movement here. So these guys, one, two, three, four, because of the creek, five, can they charge this guy alone? They are shaking the sword, so they are halved. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine. So they have to roll for disorder, which is a bit dangerous. <coughs> and of course they fail, so they are now disordered. Well, I don't think they will actually attack in that case. And the question is, where do I put the leader now? I mean, normally I would put him where we, we're going to have the close combat. But um, it's always convenient to be able to automatically remove disorder. So I think I will put Montigny with this battalion of the squadron over here. That's the movement for Montigny's regiment. So we, just as a reminder, I will... We need to do the close combat here. Now, what can we do with the others? This is Eaton's regiment here. It's three three units. And uh, I'll see where where we can go. Hmm. One, two, three. Four, five, six. That's a force march or a rapid march. Thirty seven. Twenty three, so they pass. I think. This line will basically do a backup move here. And uh, that's also they need to check for disorder to do backup. Twenty-five. Twenty-three, so they pass. 
Okay. Okay, so this guy will try to move. One, two, three, four. Or maybe they should actually move up here to protect. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. Or go over here. I'm not sure. Well, the cavalry is more, more on this side, so maybe, maybe they actually would be better situated like that. <coughs> and that's a disorder check for for this guy as well. This is a rapid march. And oh, it's plus one for passing the creek as well. Uh, but. That's 58, so they, they pass. And then... Ethan himself. Put him here. And then... Um, we should activate... Zastrov's regiment. Zastrov's regiment, so... It's this unit, this unit, and is that it? Only two. Mm -hmm. Yes, only two, two counters. So, with all the cavalry up here, if one of them gets through to make a charge on this infantry, they can then pursue and then they basically kill uh, the unit. So, I would be happier if there was at least one unit that can project zone of control behind this line so that it can stop some cavalry pursuits. <clears throat> so I will contract this line here. That's uh, one plus one for the hexes. It's two, three, four, five, and uh, that's not great. And they can't cross the river now because of five. I guess they could do like that. So that's six. I have to roll for disorder check. And that's a fail. That's 15. That's definitely a fail. So maybe we'll just put Sastro himself be able to clear the disorder next turn <coughs> and this guy I can do backup this is a trick oh there's a town there one two three Yeah, back up move. One, two, three, maybe four, maybe like that. Pass. Okay, so now we have tried to fix some kind of line here. Um, It would have been nice if these guys had a hook, but um, there's not enough movement. And the cavalry here really need to uh, 
do some work here now. So these two will do close combat on this stack here. I just need to double check the, the orientation of this unit. Yeah, it looks like they were indeed facing that direction. So we have... Uh, um, attacker morale checks. This one first. Twenty-three, which is exactly one more than the efficiency rating. So maybe they passed, or maybe I have to see if there are some modifiers that are app applicable now. <clears throat> Pre-close combat. B. So, we can have a look at the the thing there where the, the, we're doing a priest close combat, so it's B. We don't have 50% losses, it's not disordered, it's not shaken, it's not routed. None of these apply. Supported line hook, no we don't have supported line because uh, it's not, there's no terrain here, so it's clear. If there would have been a friendly unit or non-clear terrain, it would actually have been a supported line, so... Outflanked, no. I think they passed. <clears throat> so now roll for the... Oops. So now roll for the... Second unit. That's 81, so that's definitely a pass. Okay, so now we do each of these close combats individually. So, both of these must attack everything in their front hexes, and this is the only one that they can attack, so they will attack together, attacking this stack here. And uh, what do we have? So then what we do is that we roll for defender. Defender morale. Now this guy has 25 in efficiency rating. <clears throat> but it has a unit in its flank. So it, it does get this uh, pre-close combat outflanked negative or it's a positive bonus to the ER so basically now they're at 35 instead of 25 uh, but that's it I think that's all that applies to them so 35 or more and they roll 7 so they fail their morale so normally there would be um, special results here so what I've done is actually uh, because when you, especially when you play solo or getting special results all the time is kind of a pain so I only roll special results if I get 0 0 0 1 or 0 2 uh, then I reroll one die and see what special result I get except for initiative die rolls so basically it, it ha it's it's like taking every third special result actually giving a special result instead of or uh, one thirtieth of every die roll will be a special result on average instead of one every every ten die roll so I think that's a, a little bit more uh, uh, to my taste uh, when when every tenth die roll is a special result it becomes a bit annoying after a while especially for the morale checks and disorder checks the special results are not super interesting all the time they are mostly re-rolling with different modifiers 
So, so this time I rolled uh, nine. So basically, this would be a fail. So, <clears throat> so this stack is now uh, shaken. So this stack is now shaken. And that's not good for their close combat efficientness, uh, efficiency. Uh, they will have minus five on their close combat value. So let's, um, as always in the close combat, I will just roll the dice and see if I get uh, a special result. No, so the French rolls six and the allies roll seven. Now we have to calculate the actual odds and the modifiers for the close combat values. So the odds are 12 attacking 10. So that's less than 1 to 1. So one. Oh, sorry, that's just above 1 to 1. So it's on the 1 to 1 column. The allies. Oh shit. So I put out the unit here. So in this stack we have plus 4, plus 4. So the average uh, combat value is 4. They have 4. Minus 5 because of their shaken, so minus 1. They rolled a 7, so they're up to 6. And they're also enfiladed, so they get minus 3. Oh, sorry, there's being enfiladed by an enemy unit when the enemy unit is not part. Okay, so so the enemy units will get uh, enfilading bonus, but uh, the, they don't get the minus 3. So, what did I say? They're up to 6. The allies have six. The French now, they have four, four. And this guy is attacking across a creek. So he has minus one on his attack value. Uh, so he's down to three. The average combat value then is three plus four divided by two. So 3.5 rounded, so it's four. And they are enfilading. So they get plus three, uh, and they also get the cavalry bonus because the opponent's in is in their zone of control. So they get plus two. So four plus two for the cavalry that's six, plus three for inflating that's nine, plus their die roll of six that is uh, that's fifteen. So the Allied got 6 and the, the French got 15, so we're looking at the plus, plus 9 column, which I don't think it's very good for the, the French this time. So it's a uh, 9 on the 1 to 1, that's uh, defender loses 1, uh, sorry, the attacker loses 1 and this is disordered, and uh, the defender loses 2 and is routed. So one of these units will lose one strength bonus. They're both disordered. Um, I put the Hanoverian loss here. The French loss will be on the top unit. So two more losses for, for the French. And they're no longer shaken, but actually routed. And now they have to route. And then we might possibly get a pursuit. So these, this tag has to route away six hexes because it's cavalry. And uh, conveniently, they can pass through the front zone of control here. They can route, route oh, sorry. Conveniently, they have to pass through the front hexes of this unit here. Uh, so they could just route away like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, 
the routing rules are, are a little bit, um, you have to route away from the enemy and to, towards your uh, side of the board, so to speak. And so the, the, the rules are a little bit fuzzy. There are no, there are not super strict routing rules like in, like in ASL, for example. So you're kind of free to choose approximately, you have to role play a little bit. So I think routing way in a straight line like this is perfectly fine for the French. I guess you could argue that they should route more like that. Um, let's see, so yeah, maybe they should actually do that in this case. Which would have them pass through this unit and make them take a morale check. Mm. No, I think I think it's fine for them to actually route um, away like that. Okay, I think I have to stop here because of lack of memory on my camera, but uh, I'll come back to this in the next video.